Sorry for the change of scenery. I'm currently traveling for work, but I wanted to give you guys a quick review of this pen, which has become one of my favorite go-to pocket pens in my collection. This is the Caveco Sport in brass. And I have reviewed another Caveco Sport. That one was in a black plastic finish, but honestly, I wasn't a big fan of that pen. I found it extremely lightweight and it didn't really have the best engineering. There was a big seam that ran right through this portion of the pen. The brass, on the other hand, is a significant upgrade and I feel like it's worthy of its own review. Because this pen is made out of brass, it will develop a patina over time, which is a discoloration due to the oils of your hands. And if you don't really like this look, you can easily clean these pens to restore their original shine. The design of this pen is a very classic pocket pen shape, which actually dates back to the 1930s. The bottom finial is somewhat dome-shaped and it has an indent in the middle. The top finial has the Caveco logo in a stainless steel insert, which consists of the initials of the two founders and CO for company at the bottom. That finial is conical in shape, and then we have a rounded portion for the cap, which transitions to facets. On one of the facets, we do see the branding for the pen, Caveco Brass Sport Germany. The facets are straight to a tapering end portion which is rounded off. The cap comes off in three quarters of a turn to reveal a stainless steel nib. I have this one in a broad but it's available in a variety of nib grinds and in the middle of the nib we can see the Caveco logo which is also shown on the black plastic feed. The section is hourglass in shape and fairly short, and then we have threads that are smooth to the touch. The barrel is then fairly short and mostly straight, except for at the end where we see a little bit of a thinner portion. In the hand, the pen has nice heft due to that brass construction. It's very short, but suitable for quick notes. And luckily, the cap posts deeply and securely. It transfers the weight towards the crook of my hand, but it also adds some extra heft as well, and it makes for a very comfortable writing experience that feels quite premium in the hand. I'm able to write with this pen for multiple pages without any fatigue. In terms of size comparisons, here are a few compact fountain pens that I brought with me on my trip. This is a Twisby Vac Mini, which is a very compact pen made by Twisby, which holds a surprising amount of ink. Next, we have the Pilot E95S, which is one of the most popular pocket-sized fountain pens today. And down below, we have the Traveler's Company fountain pen, which is also a very popular pocket pen and also made out of brass. The Traveler's Company fountain pen features a clip, which is removable. If you wanted to remove this clip, you simply unscrew the finial, and then you can pull off the clip and screw the pin finial back on. I should have mentioned the Caveco Sport. You can also purchase a clip for, um, but I wasn't really a big fan of the clip when I tried it on the black plastic model. Uh, it just easily slid on and off of the pen, so um, I opted not for it for this one. Uh, in terms of overall lengths, when they're capped, I have this ordered in longest to shortest. The Traveler's Company fountain pen is an extremely compact pen. The two pens up top have clips that are not removable. The Twisby is a bent metal clip and the Pilot is a spring-loaded clip. In terms of taking the caps off, the Twisby has a cap that unscrews. The Pilot's cap pulls right off. The Caveco Sport quickly comes off with a three-quarter turn. And the Traveler's Pocket Pen has a cap that pulls right off. And when the pens are uncapped, we can see that the overall lengths are again pretty much the same, with the Twisby being the longest all the way down to the Traveler's Company fountain pen being significantly shorter than the rest. The section on the Twisby is fairly straight with a step up to the threads. The um, 
E95S has a section that tapers back. The Caveco Sport has that hourglass section that we just looked at. And the Traveler's Company fountain pen has a section that's straight, followed by a taper up, and then all the way straight back to the step up. Let's take a closer look at these nibs. The Twisby, Caveco, and Traveler's Company all feature stainless steel nibs, whereas the E95S is a 14 karat gold nib, which is an inlaid nib. And let's take a look at these pens with their caps posted. The Twisby has a cap that screws on in one and three quarters turn. The E95S has a cap that slides on and butts up against that seam. The Caveco Sport has a cap that's friction fit. And the Traveler's Company fountain pen, again, slides up to the seam just like the E95S. All caps post securely, and in their posted form, the Caveco Sport is significantly shorter than the rest, followed by the Traveler's Company fountain pen, and then the E95S and the VAC Mini are about the same length when they're posted. To disassemble the Caveco Sport in brass, the cap unscrews, and if we take a look inside, we can see there is a cap liner, but it appears to be held in place by two little tabs that are part of the end finial. So I wouldn't recommend disassembling this. I would just run this underwater in order to remove any dried up ink. The section unscrews from the barrel. And there we can see an optional converter, which can be pulled right out. If you want to disassemble this converter further, grab your gripping material and hug the back collar and give it a twist. Pretty soon that back piece will come out along with the piston. And then if you want to remove the nib and feed, give it a twist and it'll come out of the grip section the nib and feet are held together They're in this collar. Using your gripping materials, you can pull them out. And then those come right apart. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, let's start with the nib and the feed. The nib lines up with the feed and stops with a little ridge. And that can be placed into the collar. There is no key to this collar, so you can place it in any orientation and then screw that into the section. Next, we'll reassemble the converter. Again, this is an optional converter. You could just use international short cartridges, but I do like the fact that this is available on the market. Um, put the piston in through the back and then screw down the collar. And that's just a simple push-pull converter. Um, that can be installed into the back of the section. And then we'll attach that to our barrel. And lastly, our cap. And now we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Caveco Sport, today I selected Diamine Oxblood, which is a nice deep red with a little bit of a brown tint to it. Take the cap off the ink and the pen. Remove the section from the barrel. Make sure the converter is extended all the way down, which in this case it is. Submerge the nib into the ink and then draw up the converter. I have to go all the way down. This is a little bit challenging with this pen. There we go. Okay, I might do one more. There we go. That looks like a really full fill. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the nib. Cap up the bottle. Put the 
roll back on our pen and the cap. And now we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Caveco Sport in brass, cap unscrews, and I am going to post it. And we are writing with a stainless steel broad nib. And it is an expertly tuned nib. It's smooth, it's wet, it has really nice wide lines that actually have somewhat of a stub-like characteristic to them. Um, the only maybe drawback to this nib is that it really doesn't have much bounce. Our ink, again, is Diamine Oxblood. For flex, I'm going to turn the page. As I mentioned, it's a pretty stiff nib, no real line variation to be had, and for reverse writing. Actually quite smooth. The feed maybe dries out a little bit as you push it, um, but you could certainly reverse write for a thinner line, though maybe not the most reliable writer that way. Um, but still, you could reverse write. So what do I think of the Caveco Sport in brass? As I mentioned at the top of this review, I'm a big fan of this pen. This is one that I tend to take with me and throw in my pocket without much care. Um, it is a very comfortable pen, extremely compact. I love the heft of the brass and the premium feel in the hand. It really feels like an extension of my hand as I'm writing. Uh, I also really like this nib. Yes, it doesn't have much bounce, but it is smooth, it's wet, and it has some nice character to its line. I also like the fact that you can easily buy replacement nibs if you don't like the size that came with this pen. That's a really nice feature that you don't always see on every pen uh, that's out on the market. As I mentioned, it's a great poster, so you can easily write with this pen, and I can write with this pen posted for multiple pages without any issues. And then I also really like the fact that Caveco took the time to develop a converter for this pen. That shows that they really care about you using this pen as an everyday writer and being able to fill it up from a bottle of ink. Most compact pocket-sized fountain pens, you can only use international standard cartridges, specifically the short ones. Um, so it's, it's really nice to see this as an available option. Having said that, I'm a little disappointed that it wasn't offered as a standard part of this pen, especially at its cost. And that's probably the biggest drawback to this pen is its cost. Um, the value of having a brass pen with a stainless steel nib at such a high price is kind of a hard pill to swallow. Also, as I showed during the inking up portion, actually using this push-pull style converter can be a little bit cumbersome. And then probably the only other thing that I have that's a drawback for this pen is the design of the clip and the fact that a clip doesn't come standard with this pen. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the way that Caveco styled their removable clip. It just easily slid on and off the pen, at least in my experience. But at the same time, I really do like the way that this pen looks when it doesn't have a clip. And the fact that it doesn't have a clip means that it is very comfortable to throw into your pants pocket. So in that respect, this is truly a pocket pen for me. Um, as I mentioned, it does have quite a bit of heft to it. So if you are one that fatigues from holding heavy pens, uh, that might be something to consider when you're purchasing this model. And then lastly, the patina. I really like the patina. I think that it adds character to the pen. And if I were to have um, scratched up the surface of this pen, I think it would just add character to it. 
but if you're a person that doesn't like patina and would rather have that um, kind of pristine look to your pen, you might not want this finish. But with all that being said, I am a huge fan of this pen. Again, it feels very premium in the hand. It has a juicy nib. It's compact, so it's easy to bring with you. And it's extremely comfortable, at least in my hand. One that I am comfortable to use for long writing sessions with a beautifully tuned nib. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.